Recently, I made and released two videos reviewing first the Keith Titanium GI Canteen and Mug Set, and the second video reviewing the Keith Titanium Traditional Cylindrical Water Bottle and Cup Set. And I said in those videos that when I was finished, I would do yet a third video where I'd bring the two of them in side by sides so we can do a pro and con on each of them to help you decide if either one of these are something you may be interested in purchasing. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we begin, I just want to thank Keith of USA for sending both of these kits to me so that I could share them with you. The other thing I want to mention is that I will not be giving you the specifications for either of these two kits, as I did so in quite a bit of detail in each of the review videos. I will, of course, provide links to those videos in the video description below here and at the end. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop, I'll bring the two sets in side by side, and then we'll look at the pros and cons of each set compared with each other. So once again, the purpose of this video is to show you both of these kits and to talk about the pros and cons of each style of design and do some comparisons so that you can decide or help decide if either one of these are something you'd be interested in. So what I'll start by doing is taking a look at the Keith Titanium GI Canteen and Mug Set, or as they refer to it as the Mess Kit, show you what it came with, and then we'll talk about some of its pros and cons. So it did come with the traditional kidney shaped canteen and the traditional kidney shaped mug along with a fitted lid, lid to go on top. It did also come with a carry pouch. We'll talk more about the carry pouch in a moment. So that's uh, what the basic kit it consists of. So let's just talk a little bit about the pros and cons. So right off of the top, the single biggest thing in favor of these kits are the fact that they're made with titanium. Now, you may consider that both a con as well as a pro, but on the pro side, titanium is extremely lightweight, extremely durable, and is non-reactive, meaning that it won't rust or corrode or take on any flavors. Now, yes, you can consider that a con because the other thing about titanium is it is expensive, extremely expensive for what you have here. Now, the question is, though, is the added expense worth all the pros that you get with the titanium? Now, the, it's not to just the fact that these are titanium that make them such high quality. It is also the design. So let's start with the water bottle. So the water bottle is very traditional in shape. It has, and I just have to go look at it again, 37.2 ounces or 1.1 liter capacity and it says so right here underneath the Keith uh, label and uh, very traditional in shape. It has one improvement or a couple of improvements but one of the key improvements over the GI set is that the cap itself is made of titanium not of plastic and the opening is considerably wider than that is on the originals as well. Now, the advantage of the opening being wider is a couple of things. Number one, it's easier to fill, it's easier to clean as well. Now, that's important if you're putting anything other than just water inside, and even if you do, if it may not be all that big a deal, but it makes it easier to clean inside. Now, the other improvement is the cap itself. Being made of titanium, that's all that's coming in contact with whatever liquid you have inside, with the exception of this silicone ring that may actually come in contact just a tiny bit with any liquids inside but honestly when it is screwed down and top and down is snug there should be very little contact with anything other than titanium and it is extremely waterproof extremely well designed the other thing i like about this cap is the ring on top now we talked in the other video about the uh, pros and cons of hanging it over the fire with the cap installed and and you'll realize or remember it's not something that I'm a fan of but it does allow you to do that if that is something you want to take the risk and do by screwing it on very lightly. It just means that it is also something that you could run a lanyard through the loop and around the top of the canteen kit and you're less likely to do, lose this if that's something you're interested in doing. Let's bring the mug back into the picture. So again, traditional kidney-shaped canteen mug. 
And uh, you know, it's 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 a classic, really. It it is. It has butterfly handles on the side. I know that there is another style that has a fold over handle that clamps over the top. This is the older or the other style, the butterfly style. And the handles are quite large and quite easy to use. They do come together just nicely. Now the advantages here are a couple of things. Number one, I suppose if it's on the uh, ground and you have this pushed into a fire, it's less likely to tip back because of those handles there but of course the other design will do the same thing for you one of the nice things about having the kidney shaped style canteen is that it's got a wide surface area here so if you were to push it into a fire you have all that exposed to the heat and it, it heats the contents up that much quicker and at the same time your handles are away from the fire so you should be able to grab onto them with uh, with very little chance of burning yourself so that's a couple of the pros now this is a traditional size mug i'd really have to look again to see the volume 23 point six ounces I have to read that again, <laughs> but it looks like 23.6 ounces, and that's the traditional size. So just short of three cups of contents. Now that is right up to the very top, so it's not a functional use. Functionally, you get two, two and a half cups of water or whatever else in here, but that's a great size for a mug is that three cup mark, and the reason is is that most meals that you're going to cook for yourself are likely going to be fit right in this mug. So you really don't need anything much larger than this. I don't think I'd go smaller to cook a meal in, but this should be just about the right size. Most of the freeze-dried meals use two cups of water, maybe a little less, maybe a little bit more. So you should be able to put it all inside of this, or at least hold enough water to pour inside of the bag uh, if you're making that type of meal. I, I've cooked meals right inside of this very effectively, and it's nice to have that little extra room at the top so you don't spill or boil over. Now, it's a great mug for sure. It's high quality and the construction, you can tell, but one of the really nice things about it is the lid. The lid is a perfect fit on top of this. It is not so snug that you can't get it on and off without being easy. It's not so snug that it won't hold on. It would be nice if it was just a little bit snugger, but I'm actually quite happy with it the way it is. It doesn't move or rattle around. So that's one of the pros for it. Probably the standout pro is this right here, this ring on top. This huge rectangular ring makes it, and it stands up, makes it so easy to get this on and off when you have it over hot heat. You don't have to fiddle with it and trying to get it up. It just works ideally. Okay, having said that though, there are a couple of cons associated with the mug. These are small things and not deal breakers. So right off of the top, how about the lid? Wouldn't it be nice if it had five, six little drain holes right here drilled into the cap so that if you're cooking something like rice or even potatoes or pasta or anything else, that you can strain the water off without any risk of losing your contents by lifting the lid. So a small thing, it would have been nice just to have had that little extra done on the, on the top of the lid. The other thing is, and this is strange to me, is there are no graduated measurements inside. So there's no imperial or metric measurements to tell you how much fluid you've got inside of this. Now you can learn by experience just how much you're where likely where you're at. So if you know it's three cups to the very top or just about three cups to the very top. So two thirds of the way up is two cups of water. So you could judge it, but you know, for the sake of what it would take to put those markings inside, it would be nice, especially for those times you need a more precise measurement for specific meals if you want to get it spot on perfect. So, not all is perfect, but nothing here is a deal breaker. So, let's one more thing to mention about this is because these were designed to go together, they are a perfect fit. They sit in so tight that they the canteen will almost lift the cup up. So it's an airtight. There is no rattle or movement inside of the mug with the canteen. So it's it's ideal that way. Now you'll see in a second with a cylindrical water bottle, they weren't designed to go together. They do, but they weren't designed to. And as a result, there's a slight difference in size. Now this could be a con if you do what I do, which is to put your water bottle in the fire to heat water in. So I know a lot of people don't like doing that because it it may risk, run the risk of getting the inside of their mug dirty. I have no issue with that because, of course, what I do is if it gets really sooted up and greasy or, or coated with creosote on it, is I'll just go to the edge of the lake or anywhere I can find some sand and just grind this right into the sand or gravel 
possible. Take off as much as I reasonably can, wipe off any excess, and it will go inside. So I don't have an issue with that. However, if I were not to clean it after a short period of time, the buildup on this could be such that it would make it difficult to get in and out of the canteen mug. So that is a consideration depending on how you want to use your set. All right, now let's bring in the other set. So this is known as the Keith Titanium Sport Bottle and Mug. So they are marketed and sold separately. They are not a kit, but Keith did send them to me as a kit or uh, together as a set so that I could do this comparison with one against the other. So let's start off with the water bottle itself. So this is a, once again, I got to look, 40.6 ounce or 1200 milliliter bottle. So it's a, just a tiny bit bigger than the other one, not much but a tiny bit bigger and it is traditional cylindrical and shape so that you know people are quite used to that maybe they have carriers that will accommodate this style bottle so maybe a little bit more uh, common for people to use this style of bottle it has some unique advantages over the uh, GI canteen and the first one is that large opening on top. So without question, this is extremely easy to fill with water, either from a filter or directly from uh, another water source, and extremely easy to reach inside and clean if you have to get something out of it. Now, this wide mouth bottle, while it has the, the, that as a pro, the cap system is a bit of a con in my mind. It is intended to work as what they know as a bayonet system. Let me give you a bit of a close-up. You should be able to see ridges and grooves around the outside, three of them, and they match up with three uh, ridges on the cap. And the idea is that you would put the cap on, give it a half turn, and it locks. And it does a really good job, so long as you don't overturn it. If you turn it further, it will pass the locking point and can go right around and open up again. So uh, not a deal breaker, but I have had it where I didn't get it to the exact point and water did leak out of the canteen. So a slight risk of water leaking out if you don't put it on just the way it's intended. Now there's one more thing I want to show you about this. So there is a fair amount of silicone that is going to come in contact with any liquid you have in the water bottle. Now silicone is a safe material for the most part so I'm not concerned about that personally. But the reason they made it like this is because this has a unique uh, design feature I have not seen on any other water bottle hoping that this shows up, but right dead center is a very, very small, tiny hole drilled in the cap. And what that does is if you were to fill this up with a hot liquid, put the cap on, lock it down, and when it cooled, that can create such a vacuum inside that it can make it very, very difficult to get the lid off. That hole allows air pressure to regulate itself and adjust itself so that it would obviously, as the vacuum is created, would pull some air in. If you put it in and you didn't want an explosive reaction by opening the cap, that would also equalize the pressure inside. Now, it's not so much of a hole that you can put the cap on and boil with it. Definitely don't do that. But it is enough for just a little bit. Air will come out, water won't. So that's the way it is designed. So that is the canteen. Now, let's just do a side-by-side -side with the canteen from the GI set for a second, because I want to talk about carrying these on your person. So if you're going to carry these in your backpack, this may not be much of a difference to you. In fact, a lot of backpacks are designed to carry cylindrical bottles over top of one of these. These are more the GI style that are intended to be carried on your belt for ready access. And that makes a lot of sense. And if you look at them, there is a distinct difference in their width. And with the cylindrical being considerably wider. Now, what's the advantage of that? Well, between the wider, narrower profile with that little bit of a flask look and that kidney shape here, this will ride closer to your body, stick out less if you're wearing it on your belt or if you're carrying it in a carrier over the shoulder like the carrier came with, and that's the way I like to carry it, it's just a little easier to carry on your person than this one is. Now, it's not that this is extremely hard, and uh, I, although I wasn't carrying it a lot, I am starting to carry it more. I'll explain why in a minute, but it is just a little bit easier to carry this on my person than this one. Now, let's bring the mug in and talk about the mug for a second. 
So this is the mug that Keith sent me. It is a 650 milliliter mug or 22 ounces even. Again, well constructed. It has smaller butterfly handles than the other one did. It doesn't have the GSI style handle that, uh, I'm trying to figure out why the camera is not focusing. All right, let's see if that does any better. I think that's better. Okay, so it's the, they're good size. They're not too big, not too small, but and compact enough. And it does come with a nice fitting lid. The lid does fit on nicely. Just a little bit of movement on top, but nothing that's going to be annoying in terms of rattling. So again, a nice mug or a nice size, nice quality mug. Being 650 mils, just below the size of this one, just by an ounce and a half, you wouldn't think it would be much of a difference, and it isn't really. However, if when I'm cooking, I tend not to want to cook inside of this mug. I would heat water in this, pour it into a meal, which I've done, but I'm not likely, not likely to put my meal inside of it because it just feels like it's going to be a bit too small. That 22 ounces is right up to the brim, so there's not a lot of excess capacity in this mug in that way. It probably shouldn't make a difference, and it's probably not technically much of a difference, but to me, it just, for some reason, I resist cooking meals directly in this mug. Okay, a few other things about the mug. For all that it has going for it, it has a couple of things that are not <laughs> deal breakers, but just a tiny bit of annoying. And the first thing is this the stand-up triangular ring on the top of the lid. Now, this is very common to a lot of titanium mugs, and uh, so there's nothing original there. I've never really liked it because I feel it's too small. The way, and uh, the problem with this one, of course, though, is it doesn't stand up. It doesn't have any locking mechanism. Other mugs from other manufacturers will cut a little notch in the place that holds it, and you can slide it one way or another, and it will stand up. This one has a tendency to want to fall down, and I find more often than not, when I go to lift, this besides being small and having to get my finger close to a hot lid um, it, it's hard to get picked up so I'll end up using the tip of my knife or a fork or a point small pointy stick to get the lid up for lifting it annoying but not a deal breaker I mean it's still just as functional it's just a little bit harder to lift the lid off the other thing like the other mug lid it doesn't have any holes again wouldn't that have that have been nice to have had a couple of drain holes for straining off any water inside that you have with vegetables or the other thing and again, like the other mug, no graduated markings. Again, I don't know why. It would have been just that much more versatile had they included some markings on top. Now, here's what's interesting about this combination. Because these were not designed to go together, they're not perfectly sized. If I put the water bottle down inside, there is some movement. I mean, it's not excessive, it's not a lot, and it's not really going to rattle around and make a whole lot of noise in your backpack, but it is just a little bit larger. Here's one of the good things about that. Any creosote or, or tar buildup on the outside is less likely to cause it to jam inside of this one as opposed to the GI set. So you can consider that a plus. Now, I know, as I mentioned a minute ago, a lot of people don't like using their water bottles as something to boil water in because they don't like the fact that it gets dirty and it may transfer that dirt inside the mug. You can see there's none inside of mine. So I don't worry about it. However, if you do, one advantage of that slight mismatch in size is the fact that you can take a bandana, drape it over the top of the mug, and you can insert it down inside. Now, it's a very snug fit, so it's not going to rattle at all, and you're going to keep the inside of your mug clean from your water bottle. It's quite a quite a snug fit, as you can set, see, but it does work. So that is an option if, you, if that is important to you. Okay, now I just want to take a quick look at the carriers for these things and talk about them in comparison one against the other. So let's start with the one for the GI kit. So here's the one for the GI kit. Now I'm not going to put all everything back in the pouch just to show you because I, like I said, I get, did give you quite a bit more detail on these in that other video. Again, it's just very simple, very, very simple. There is no special adornments to it. There are no pockets, no way of attaching anything to the outside of this. It is, however, made very high quality. The materials are really great. It's just simple. It has a simple fold over the top yoke to hold the water bottle in. And it does have a shock cord. It, is that shock cord? No, it's not. It's just paracord with a cord lock on it to give it a little bit more snugness. Um, it's functional is what it is. It does have molly on the back if it's something you want to attach to the outside of a pack or if you have spots on your belt that will accept that if you want to carry it that way. 
Um, you know, I think this is perfect for the design. For the intended purpose of carrying this around my neck, I really don't want to add extra weight to the bag. So it's perfectly functional for that in that respect. There are, are, however, a lot of aftermarket sets if you want to purchase one that you can add more things to. So here is the case for the cylindrical water bottle. Now, again, same materials, same high quality. It does have a little bit of a thin foam liner in between the inner and outer liners of this. Presumably a little, little bump protection, maybe a little bit of heat retention. The strap is removable. It has these titanium S-hook type of connections on if you want to take the strap right off. There is no belt loop to attach it to anything and it does have a collar with a paracord and cord lock to snug the bottle in. It's functional again and it works just fine for the water bottle but boy is it snug. It is actually quite can be quite a chore to get the water bottle in. Sometimes I actually turn it upside down to pull it on. So you can see it's a very, very snug fit. Now, honestly, if I'm carrying it this way, once it goes in, it's staying in. Unless I'm using it for cooking, I'm probably not going to be taking it in and out. One small thing I think they could have done that would have improved this slight or quite considerably is to put a small eye hole, eyelet, eyelet right in the bottom just to allow the air out because let me, let me show you as I try to get the bottle out. It creates a vacuum that actually collapses the case. So obviously if the case or the carrier is that tight just on the water bottle, there's no way you're getting the two of these inside. So that made it a little less versatile in my mind and that's a bit unfortunate. But then I recalled I had something in my kit at home that might work and I dug it out and yes it does. So this is a inexpensive water bottle carrier. I bought it at a store here in Halifax, a Canadian store known as Mountain Equipment Co-op. I bought it quite a few years ago. I can't even be sure they still sell them, but it's just a simple nylon carrier with a Velcro belt loop that you can put on and off over your pack belt and carry your bottle on your side. I added the strap on the outside for shoulder carry, but uh, you know, you could, if you find one of these, if you can't, I am sure that there are others on the market. This was designed for whole holding a Nalgene, the plastic Nalgene bottles. So any carrier that will hold a Nalgene bottle will also hold this kind, this titanium water bottle and mug. Oh, by the way, they put an eyelid on the bottom. Why couldn't Keith? Just makes it much easier, right? Now here's the nice thing about this simple carrier is now I can get everything in, starting with the lid. The mug will go in. And then the bottle will go in on top. Now it is slightly, slightly short. That's because the bottle is a little taller than the average Nalgene is. But you know, there is a shock cord and cord lock that I can bring in nice and snug around the bottle. And the chances of this falling out are very, very slim. I, I've made this much more functional. In fact, I enjoy carrying it. And it is the reason why I am now carrying it probably as much or as often as I am the GI set is because I can do that with it now. So again, again it was unfortunate that Keith did not design a pouch that would accommodate both of these. But again, not a deal breaker because you will very easily find one that will fit the two of them. All right, I think I've exhausted all the pros and cons I can think of for each of these sets, comparing them one against the other. I'd be interested in knowing your thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on both or either the Keith Titanium GI Canteen and Mug or the traditional cylindrical Canteen and Mug set? I'd like to know your thoughts, either pro or con against them. And if you have any questions, of course, add those in the comments section below. I will put links to the original videos and links to Keith if you want to have a closer look at either of these set. Again, it, this was not an attempt to convince you you need to purchase either one of these, but if you have been considering them, I thought I could give you some information that might help you make that decision. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.